Welcome to Kaleidoscope Toy and Miniature Australian Shepherds and Dream Gates Gated Horse Rescue. Still have one puppy available from Barkley. I'm playing with him right now. He's 12 weeks old. I've been on vacation for a couple of weeks and so he stayed with um, my brother and uh, they kept him in the house took him out on the leash to potty and all of that. So he had really good training while we were gone. But we're back now, and if anybody's looking for a male Australian Shepherd, black tricolor, come here. Oh, he's, gonna, he's a hefty kid, so he's going to probably be about, I don't know, 30 pounds, maybe 35. He's kind of slowed down on his growing, uh, but it's hard to say. He's definitely not going to be tiny. He's almost as big as his dad right now, so... Uh, but anyway, he's a nice, calm puppy. He's a good boy, and he is available. But uh, this video is actually going to be about raising your older puppy. I had a, a new subscriber, thank you so much, write in, and they sounded pretty desperate. Um, their puppy, their Australian Shepherd puppy, is now six months old, and uh, it's really given them fits. She said if she told me everything that was going wrong, that uh, she would have to write an essay, and I totally understand that. Um, her big complaint that she sent to me was the puppies jumping on people, biting their heels, uh, and when she leash puts um, steps on the leash to get the puppy off, then it really pitches a fit, and I'm not picturing, I can't see exactly what she's doing. I'm assuming this is a she, could be a he. Um, I'm not sure exactly what they're doing, I can't picture it. I'm, you know, I would never step on the leash and pull the puppy down to the ground with a choke chain on it, or, uh, you know, any kind of a collar. It'd have to be on harness, and really, I don't want to do that anyway. I might just step, stand on the leash to where it's comfortable for the dog to sit, stand, or lie down, and then it can't jump up. You're not really trying to correct it. You're not trying to upset it. You're just trying to show it. If it if it tries to jump up, it's jumping against pressure. But you want it to be comfortable, able to sit, stand, or lie down comfortably. Not really correcting, if that makes sense. But I'm going to back way up because really when people start to write in and they say, oh, my dog is doing this and it's doing that. And how do I fix this? And how do I fix that? And they're trying to put out these little fires. They're trying to put out little fires instead of actually fixing the relationship and really what it is is it's a relationship problem like here i am with this puppy he's 12 weeks old and if i'm not engaging him until he gets a little bit tired then he's just going to go look for trouble he's going to go chew on something inappropriate he actually um i tried to record this a little earlier and i forgot to hit record but during the recording he went off and he found something that he shouldn't have and i went and got it away from him and then i i gave him a ball to play with instead so you have to figure that if your puppy is awake it needs to be engaged. And if you can't play with it, you're busy doing something else, then it needs to be in a pen, exercise pen, with some toys so it can entertain itself. But now this person is up to having a six month old puppy, Australian Shepherd, and I can't remember if it was a miniature or a standard or a toy, what it was, but they, they're pretty desperate um, and it's way out of control. And they're actually have talked about taking it back to the breeder um, to for the breeder to rehome this dog uh, which is really tough to do when you get a puppy which you know I, I I try to choose my adopters wisely people that will actually do their research on herding breeds and what it takes to raise one and have one and who will make that 10 to 12 to 15 year commitment to the dog uh, because I don't want to see my puppies coming back to me at six months of age because then the breeder has all these problems they have to fix and then they have to rehome that dog and that's not easy to do so what you have to do is you have to stop looking at each individual behavior that you don't want. You have to start picturing what you do want. Like right now, we've been playing tug for quite a while because I actually thought I was recording for like 15 minutes and then I didn't even have the camera on. And so now he's just kind of laying over there and he's nice and content. I'll just throw him the tug in case he wants to chew on it and play with it. Um, but he's just laying over there content. So. I've got my eye on him, I can see what he's doing, but he's entertaining himself just fine. But instead of looking at each individual behavior that you don't want, you've got to look at the relationship. 
And the relationship is, who's in charge? Me. Now, every time this puppy pitches a fit, they give in to the puppy. They give in to it. And these puppies can pitch terrible fits. I mean, this puppy, the first time I put him on a leash, he pitched a terrible fit. And I just stood there. I wasn't putting any pressure on it. I just waited it out. I didn't talk to him. I, oh, it's okay. It's okay, Spot. Oh, good dog. You know, no. Because what you're doing then is you're praising the behavior that you do not want. So I just stood there. I held the leash. He screamed. He flipped. He went crazy. He bit at the leash. He bit at the harness. He, and I just stood there. And I just waited. And then he went flat to the floor and he was frozen and I just waited. And then eventually they stand up and they start acting a little bit normal and then you, you praise them. So you have to be careful what you're praising. And, and come here, Barkley. All right, get her up here for a minute. Okay, so if your dog, let's say your dog is scared of something. Oh, oh, there's thunder. Oh, it's okay, Barkley. Oh, it'll be, it'll be over in just a few minutes. Oh, you're all right. Oh, it's okay. It's just a little bit of thunder. Oh, okay. What you're doing is you're teaching the dog to act scared. Because dogs don't understand you soothing it. It either understands praise, okay, or it understands correction. So if she's shivering and shaking from thunder and I'm holding her and petting her, what I'm doing is, I, she doesn't think, she doesn't know I'm soothing her. She thinks I'm praising the behavior that I don't want, which is her acting scared of the thunder. So it's the same thing with anything. Anytime you are either releasing pressure, because dogs are trained by what? The release of pressure. So if the puppy is thrashing on the leash and I give in to that, release the pressure, then what I do is I train the dog to thrash because I praised it by releasing the pressure. You have to learn how animals learn, which is through the release of pressure. And you have to learn how to be a dog trainer and dog handler. This animal is not your child. People, oh my, oh, I just adopted a dog. No, you didn't. You bought an animal. It's not your baby, it's an animal. There's nothing wrong with being an animal. That's what they are. There's nothing wrong with being a dog. There's nothing wrong with saying, I, I have a dog, I bought a dog. I have a dog, I'm a dog owner. I'm not a pet parent. I didn't give birth to this animal. It's not a human. And this is where animals suffer, is people that put human qualities on an animal. They make the animal, they make, they, they start to think that the animal can reason and have human, is a human. It's not. It's an animal. Now here I have the puppy. He's in my lap. My puppy, my dog. Okay. It's not my child. I didn't give birth to this thing. Okay. It's a dog. Now I want this dog to lay on his back. All right. Very nice. Now if he was to thrash, which the first time he thrashed his brains out. Okay. He thrashed his brains out. I would hold him until he did what he's doing right now, which is he's totally soft and submissive. If I take this foot or this foot, see how he's just very soft and submissive. His end of his tail, okay, now he's gonna thrash a little bit. When he did, I squeezed down on him. When he relaxes, I relax. Good boy. And I'll put him down. Nope. Okay. There, see the difference? As soon as he started to kick, I went back to that. I just trained that dog everything he needs to know <laughs> about our relationship. I am the boss of you. You are a dog. You are not only a dog, you are my dog. And when I ask you to do something or I put you in a position, you are to do it and it's also building his trust in my judgment because no animal wants to be put on his back. I don't want to be put on my back. I can't even stand to recline in a dentist chair. It's like, why do you got to put me back so far? It's an instinct to fight that. So when they fight that, if you go, oh, and you put the puppy down on the floor, then you just taught it to act, um, you know, to be uh, impulsive 
uh, have no impulse control and also that it can control you. So the simplest thing you can do with your young puppy is to just lay it on its back gently. And if it fights, you just hold it there and, and when it relaxes, you relax. And you scratch it on the chest. You let it know, hey, you know, this isn't such a bad deal. And then you put it on the floor. But you saw when I started to put him on the floor, he started to kick and I went, no, nope, we're gonna go back up here until I can put you on the floor and you're soft. Now, you think, what does that have to do with training the dog not to jump on my sister? Everything to do with it. Now, your dog is six months old. You might not be able to do that. But when you when you get to a six month point with the dog that you got at eight weeks old and, and it's out of control, you need professional help. You need to get with a trainer, uh, preferably through a kennel club, if you have one, and either do some one-on-one -on -one training of yourself, have them train you, don't have them train your dog, have them train you, or get into a class. Learn how to be a dog handler, but what you have to understand is every single time you interact with that dog, you're training at something. Every time you interact with a puppy, you're training at something. The number one thing I want my puppy to understand is that I am the leader, you are the follower, I am your master, you are the subordinate. This is what dogs want. They don't want to be your baby. They don't want you to be their parent. Dogs are hardwired to be a companion worker to the human. This herding dog is hardwired to listen to you, be a worker, and do what it's bit. It's called a high bitability dog, meaning it wants to please, it wants to know a job. If you don't give it a job, it will become neurotic. This puppy's job is to just be right now a good boy, like he's being right now over there laying with his mother. Uh, I play with him a little bit walk politely on the leash, go to the bathroom on the pee pads like he's supposed to, or when I take him outside to go to the bathroom, and sit politely for his food. And you know, that's kind of it right now. But see, what I'm doing is I'm disallowing jumping up. I'm disallowing him nipping. I'm disallowing all these things. I'm redirecting him to things that he can do, like tug. You gotta have the bigger brain and you've got to learn how to be a dog trainer and a dog handler and understand that every time you interact with that dog, you're teaching it something. Now, with this dog that already has a slew of bad habits, then you're gonna have to start at ground zero. And that is, you've got to go back to leash all the time. A house line, that dog taught, actually really, I'd prefer it was tied onto you with a six foot leash so that you can correct it and you can redirect it to the things that you want it to do. Make sure at six months it's getting ample exercise, taking it out into a large fenced area. If you don't have a fenced in yard, you better come up with one because this is not an apartment dog and the walk around the block isn't gonna get it. It can be an apartment dog if you have a place to take it out and burn off some energy. Get it out into a large fenced area, teach it how to fetch a ball, bringing it back to you. Give it that job of fetch. But I'm gonna to suggest to you right away that you go and you get professional help as soon as you possibly can. Don't give up on your dog. That dog would never give up on you. So thanks for watching. Hey, don't forget to like, subscribe, share. Every time you do so, you're helping out with our rescue horses. Uh, every little tiny bit that the channel brings in right now is not a whole lot, but um, that helps us rescue these horses. So. Thanks for watching and drop us a comment if you will. Here he comes. There he goes. <laughs>